Welcome to the Masterclass series Being Future Ready brought to you by the Vadwani Institute of Technology and Policy and the Indian Institute of Management Bangalore. We are excited to bring forth leaders, academicians, policy makers, thinkers, strategists and experts on emerging technologies where they will share their experience, expertise and advice on digital transformation. and the adoption of implementing emerging technologies in the government that results in stronger governance and better public service delivery in this master class we will have the following agenda for you we would like to introduce ourselves we are vadwani institute of technology and policy from vadwani foundation one of the key benefits of the master class series being future ready is to meet and interact with industry experts accomplished government leaders academicians and practitioners on emerging technologies and digital transformation we learn in these sessions their experience expertise and advice on digital transformation and the adoption of implementing emerging technologies in the government that results in stronger governance and better public service delivery to make this experience worthwhile We will also be awarding a certificate of participation to all registered audience members who attend at least 50% of these masterclass sessions by IIMB and Vadwani Foundation. So without much further ado, let's dive into our masterclass session today. Namaskar and welcome to the masterclass series of Being Future Ready. Um this is of course a masterclass that we do with Vadwani Foundation. So before we start we have the agenda here we'll quickly share and introduce who we are we'll share our partners IIM Bangalore NEGD and of course ourselves Vadhani Institute of Technology and Policy um before we begin the introductions uh we would also like to share that in this master class we will have the first part uh through the expert speak which is from our honorable guest Mr T Koshi and in the course of his uh, monologue we will also request our audience to uh, write your questions in the chat we will have those questions selected and those questions will be moderated by us in the second half of this master class so the second half of the master class will be q&a so without much further ado i'd like to invite shri venkatesh from iim bangalore to introduce csitm Thank you, Prabhi. I am uh, Venkatesh Balakrishnan, manager for the Center for Software and IT Management of IIM Bangalore. On behalf of the center and IIM Bangalore, I take pleasure in welcoming the esteemed speaker for uh, today's event, uh, Mr. Koshi, Prabhi, and the entire of Advani team, Rajnish Ji, Puneet, and the entire of NGD team, and all the participants for today's event. I shall give a very brief introduction. CSITM is IIM Bangalore Center of Excellence on Digital Technology Management it was started in 1998 and uh, Professor Shankadeep Banerjee is the current chair for the center and it has always been serving as a hub for open exchange of information across academia government and industry and uh, it has developed a huge network of uh, resources and uh, from that angle this master class series is of very big importance because it brings all of them together in terms of uh, the activities uh, the center supports uh, research and training activities through seminars and webinars such as this and uh, also workshops on contemporary topics one of the key upcoming events is the 6th edition of the software product management summit which has been scheduled for uh, february of 2024 incidentally all the participants in this series are related to software product management uh, big time we can participate as uh, speakers panelists paper presenters as uh, academic speakers or nominate your products for excellence awards and we will be reaching out to you apart from uh, the digital media postings uh, we would be reaching out to you as well so look forward to your participation and today's event is even more important to us uh, because mr koshi is an alumnus of iim bangalore i am sure some of the professors and old colleagues of uh, mr koshi will be either participating or uh, watching the recordings and uh, welcome you sir and uh, with that i hand it back to purabi to take uh, today's event forward so i would now like to also invite on the stage to introduce any gd to us welcome our speaker of course rajneesh sir has already done that 
So we have Rajneesh Kumar ji, who is the director at NEGD. Thank you all. I think the audience is all waiting for Koshi sir. Uh, NEGD is National E-Governance Division with the Ministry of Economics and IT, responsible for all the e-governance projects in the country uh, in, at the center. And we also indulge in capacity building of states and UTs to uh, get the emerging technologies into the state. So welcome, sir. We are all waiting for your exposition on digital commerce. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So at this note, we would like to quickly introduce uh, WITP. We are a part of the Vadhani Foundation and our aim is to enable digital transformation that increases the impact and outcomes from government policy and initiatives. And we work out of three specific areas, one being the skilling and academy, where we are focused on delivering classroom training as well as self-paced courses to upskill uh, across various digital platforms. And we also focus on technology enabling, where we are able to demonstrate on various emerging technologies and their implementations in government operations. And we also focus on program, program and policy advocacy, where we are focused on digital missions, on skilling and entrepreneurship, policy advocacy on data policies and data strategies. I'm very, very happy and excited to introduce our 12th honorable speaker in the 12th episode of this series of Being Future Ready, none other than Mr. P. Koshi who is well known for ONDC. He's the MD and CEO of the Open Network for Digital Commerce, ONDC, which is a groundbreaking initiative in India aimed at democratizing e-commerce. He brings a wealth of professional experience being an alumnus of IIM Bangalore, and he has played a foundational role in NSTL as an executive director. His expertise extends to key digital transformation projects including significant contributions to India's UID project, the world's largest ID program, and various other global digital ID initiatives. Mr. Koshi extends his expertise to several pivotal digital transformation projects within India, such as revamping the pension system, developing the tax information network, and strategizing the ID in, uh, architecture for implementing GST. He's also lent his expertise to the World Bank's pension transformation projects and participated in a, part, in a pension reform mission in China. He's been a valuable member at SEBI committees, focusing on dematerialized settlement for sec of securities and mutual funds, as well as RBI committees related to the online tax accounting system for direct and indirect tax. Additionally, he has contributed to the subgroup on technology of the Tax Administration Reform Commission of the Government of India, working on reforms for tax administration efficiency for both direct and indirect tax. Mr. Koshi plays an important role in numerous e-government initiatives encompassing the unique ID project, expenditure information network, project platinum for legal and IT framework development in the Ministry of Urban Development the Common Data Repository for the Insurance Sector, e-stamping and the automation of back functions in various Indian states. We are excited and honored to have you as our speaker for this Masterclass series, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Good morning to you all. Uh, and so what I understand from the organizers that we have a large and disparate crowd. Some of you would be very clued on to the, uh, you know, the whole development that's happening. Uh, some of you are, uh, you know, not so clued on. Some of you may have a big picture view. Uh, some of you have a, you know, deeper understanding of ONDC. So since anyway, uh, you know, so what I'm going to do is to sort of uh, uh, work almost on the lowest common denominator uh, in the sense uh, I'll be sort of putting uh, the whole context of ONDC <clears throat> how it's evolved, why is it evolved, or how, why has it evolved, what, where we are now, what is a roadmap that we are expecting, and so on and so forth. So I and um, and I'll be giving a sort of top line view, and uh, I will also draw your attention to lots of uh, material that has been made available, um, you know, online. And of course, today's session, if there is uh, the last, probably I think half an hour, you may focus on, uh, you know, being sort of asking and focus on asking questions so that we can have a more interactive session than a pure monologue. Um, so let me just get uh, going uh, on this uh, thought process. And 
uh, just putting the whole context in place for uh, you know for all of us here if you remember uh, you know of course tcp ip made wide area network uh, possibility uh, computers across continents or across buildings can talk to each other but those days you know many of you i mean most of you are youngsters probably you don't remember those good old days or bad old days when we were uh, i still remember as a student that only the smart geek guy could do all this uh, inter uh, continental access and do and so on forth and sometime uh, late 80s i uh, think uh, we had the the whole uh, tim lee came and uh, what he got launched uh, or rather made http available as um, you know a, a public infrastructure and that actually changed the way the information information sharing happens over the internet around the world i remember reading somewhere then he said either it will change the world or this http will change the world or it will be uh, it will mean nothing to anybody but uh, because nobody knew what's going to happen but then as you all know it changed the world uh, and the to begin with what was there was only information sharing that you know people could make uh, broadcast and make their information available in a standard protocol and there could be different browsers which are following the um, you know which are using the same protocol could uh, discover that so information sharing that way was a very democratic process so long as you could create a web page or a portal or anything on a you know <clears throat> using http as a protocol uh, the any browsers which uh, can read the uh, http by uh, you know html pages could uh, see that so what uh, sort of determined primarily the the um, the traffic to any website was the um, and the content okay what the website provider did so the control want was in the provider's hand with respect to the content that he gave the quality of content the relevance of the content and the uh, publicity that he gave it to the content in the different medium uh, and that he was then discoverable by any of the browsers and the traffic was uh, primarily based on his own action it didn't matter whether uh, some user used bra you know chrome or some user would edge or somebody used the internet internet explorer so it was you know, independent of that so the the uh, somebody who is uh, helping them to be discovered did not play any uh, role with respect to the traffic that is there similarly that was on the information sharing then came the messaging which is all what we call in or the email there again this source may same democratic idea is what prevailed is that <clears throat> there could be different email uh, service providers either uh, as a public uh, you know for anybody could use like the google or yahoo or there could be some email service providers which are exclusive to some organization which is running only the you know in you know the in the uh, messaging within their organization but all of them if they use smtp as a protocol could talk to each other so where whichever platform gives uh, email service to a client and with whatever facilities that is there he, they could always share an information with another uh, internet uh, sorry email account holder from any other service provider which is again because of an open protocol smtp here whereas when it came to uh, the commerce which was the third uh, layer i mean third stage of this evolve evolution of internet where uh, people could do uh, commerce that means somebody could sell and somebody could buy Uh, that went in a slightly different domain, I mean, uh, you know, on a route where the service provider, which established platforms, were using proprietary protocol, not an open protocol, which meant that uh, the um, sellers are and buyers, which are present in one platform, could be visible and transact with each other, and not with anybody else. so essentially if you look at those led to what we call more uh, wall gardens so which uh, you know which meant that uh, you know in any domain there would be only few players who will take the majority uh, market share and after that they are unseatable you know if you look at the, that has been the strategy in every domain whether it is uh, you know from consumer goods whether it is in travel whether it is in food Uh, in any of them you would see few enterprises coming quite a lot of uh, resources 
uh, throwing a lot of resources to get an exclusive uh, user base of buyers and sellers, and then they are practically, you know, you know, unseatable from that one. If you look at the consumer side, you know, in the commerce side, consumer product side, if you look at about uh, globally, about um, four entities together hold more than forty-five uh, percent of the market share. And the same is the case even if you look at India or many of the countries. What you will see is a concentration of uh, few platforms who had the resources to capture a significant percentage of the market share. That's why you know, and they normally focused on certain large domain like consumer goods. It could be food, or it could be you know, ride hailing, or it could be hospitality, and so on and so forth. What it meant that the um, in any of this uh, domain where there are two or three players who have managed to get the predominant market share uh, would ensure that the new players will practically find it impossible to jo join so there is entry barriers and in a way if you look at the each of this platform has almost uh, the uh, buyer and seller uh, almost as their captive user base uh, it is not because of any legal restriction some cases there is to be even less legal, legal restriction some platforms say if you are selling to my platform you can't sell it to any other platform even if those contracts are not there, uh, for a seller to be present in multiple platform, it means that you know, he would have to have legal, procedural, contractual, uh, you know, all uh, processes which are uh, unique to each of them uh, being established. So that sort of uh, led to certain kind of what you call the captivity. And uh, there is significant amount of information asymmetry with the players in the middle. You know the the who help to talk talk the buyer and sellers have significantly more information, which um, help them to have undue undue uh, influence on the buyer and uh, uh, and they help them to make uh, very often un unfair uh, demands on the seller because they are practically captive. Okay, uh, while each of those entity did humongous amount of innovation to make their services meaningful for their client customer clients to maximize their uh, you know the, the the shareholders return broad based innovation was limited because if i had anything smart to offer in an e-commerce or in food domain either i could go and uh, make it available to existing players uh, you know who may have their priority on who should be the buyers and sellers whereas i will not have any capability to you know try my uh, innovation so uh, in that way it also limits the avenues for buyer sellers and in the whole when such uh, you know uh, hold is there for limited players either as monopoly or oligopoly their uh, you know the overall uh, operate cost has a tendency to go up because the uh, they may not be the best in terms of optimizing the cost of every building block of blocks of commerce Okay, so this was the, uh, you know, this challenge. So in a broad base, if you look at the, uh, you know, while most of the countries and continents went in terms of for having these kind of, you know, if I use the word, uh, East India companies who have maximizing the interest of few shareholders in every domain, practically having in the domain in their control, India went in a different way of having what we call digital public infrastructure. What is actually, if I just, you know, use the common balance, like digital rails on which the you know every enterprises could run their business in the best possible interest for themselves as well as for their clients bringing in significant amount of competition and providing a free uh, play um, possibility for every player so that you would have seen i don't want to go into that one you would have seen that uh, you know the foundations of that is being built with respect to Aadhaar, which is like a universal id uh, you know foundation id which uh, you know which sort of um, brought down the cost of KYC from uh, you know some approximately from five six hundred rupees to maybe three rupees and which essentially significantly helped different service providers to grow their uh, access in a very very fast fashion probably would have heard the case study saying that Reliance when Jio when they Reliance Jio the telco when they came in the uh, the Aadhaar based uh, you know KYC helped their uh, speed and kept their cost down that they managed to do something like uh, you know 100 million in six months time which would have been possible in the absence of that kind of uh, uh, infrastructure same thing you would have seen in the payment infrastructure the upi which essentially made a huge uh, made a 
very fast adoption of digital transactions in the payment side uh, helped by you know some of the jandan account which is like digital accounts which is sort of um, uh, opened uh, you know using all this electronic infrastructure uh, to manage something like more than uh, 50 billion accounts in a very short period of time uh, which uh, helped the trans you know transmission of uh, digital benefits uh, very very fast uh, without leakage so uh, as you would have heard this comment saying then india would have taken about 46 years to re- go from 18% to 80% bank account penetration but with this kind of uh, digital infrastructure it, uh, you know we managed to do that uh, in uh, practically 6 years time if you look at ondc open net for digital commerce uh, draws its foundation a philosophical foundation and infrastructural support uh, and the complementing uh, Uh, systems uh, in the same uh, uh, you know in the same what you call what we currently call as india stack uh, you know so the idea is to reimagine digital commerce make it democratic and equitable uh, you know uh, is a thought process with a very broad based participation so if i just uh, expand a little more what it says you know i earlier explained to you the idea of proprietary platforms and its different impact you know what is just schematically present here on the left side is the you know the current platforms you know just for you know ease of understanding i to sort of connect showed only two building blocks in every platform is the building blocks of uh, buyer interface and buyer seller interface on the left side i've said the sellers which is somebody who have something to sell and the buyer side somebody who want something and uh, each of them have their interface provided by the platform to meet uh, their uh, requirement with respect to participation in the platform so uh, what it meant that since all of them are working on proprietary protocol if a seller was there in uh, in a platform a he is visible only to consumers in platform a and uh, somebody like s2 here on the left side wanted to be present in two platforms he would have had to do all the integration digital contractual legal procedural process uh, everything for both of them and also equip himself to meet the expectation with respect to the offers for each of them separately and so on and so forth with on with uh, he had very limited control so that's how we said as earlier like it leads to uh, probably only few players taking majority of market share and once they are there nobody can come and touch them unless somebody humongously large come with lots of resources to sort of uh, you know capture the size from somebody else you have seen that from in every segment okay so what the uh, our idea of open network is only two simple principles one is unbundling that means any of the building blocks of the uh, transactions can be unbundled and make them all interoperable so that's what you're seeing on the right side for us i said for simplicity purpose i've kept only the buyer interface and some seller interface separately buyer interface is coming to platform xyz and seller interface is coming to platform p q and r and the sellers which are managed to make their catalogs visible and establish the process for consumption of transaction through platform x on the left side are now visible to any buyers coming from any of the platform x like p q r on the right side uh, which is looking after the interest of the buyer so the need to uh, you know the s1 to be independently integrating with xyz is gone and that has been made possible by uh, ondc protocol which essentially builds on the open source backend protocol with a thin layer of uh, tra- you know which is essentially enabling transactions on the top of which as a thin layer of commerce related uh, you know parameters added making com- the, the total thing what we call the uh, ondc protocol for convenience sake Uh, and uh, which is as i said founded on a open source backend uh, protocol which is a foundation and even as a comp- uh, collective total on ndc protocol uh, what we have uh, uh, made it is uh, even that is uh, under ccnd that means it's available for anybody to use as they want so long as they recognize the usage in uh, here uh, in india and even there in the ondc protocol the backend part of it is a completely uh, under mit i mean like you know anybody uh, you know can take it and do anything what they want to do as they feel please as per the broader you know open uh, licensing arrangement that is there 
so that's uh, uh, the whole transformation we are trying to do. So now if you extend your imagination, you can see that the building blocks need not be only, uh, you know, the seller interface and buyer interface, logistics, warehousing, packaging, uh, sometimes assaying, all of them are different building blocks. And all of them, since we'll be using this protocol, it means that they can be nicely stitched together to get a seamless experience to the end consumer. I'm sure that you're all familiar with this uh, unbundling in every business, uh, whether you are it's a banking operation or whether it is manufacturing of car or in the service side, whether it is giving a, you know, a telecom service. I'm sure that uh, some of uh, many of you are fair with, uh, you know, the Virgin uh, mobile uh, model where they have only practically a CRM software and the billing software with everything else is uh, third party survey, third party service providers. All of them nicely stitched together by uh, by Virgin to get the seamless experience to the end consumer by Virgin Mobile and handle any of his grievances by the Virgin Mobile itself uh, with the seamless uh, integration they have with all the support component providers. So uh, we uh, we uh, so the way India proceeded was that uh, you know there had been um, you know. Uh, uh, initiative came from the Ministry of Commerce at the time of pan pandemic to sort of uh, improve the access, uh, the consumer as well as the, the stores, um, you know, have for each other. Uh, and then instead of uh, original thought was to sort of develop something like a specialized Kirana app or something like that. But then the when the you know the sub like subject matter experts sat together and discussed that that is a very very short termish approach. But can we look at something which is, uh, you know, transformatory, which can completely change the way? And that's when uh, the people, uh, or, you know, the Ministry of Commerce, DPIT also brought in uh, experts from the field and also brought some giants in this field like Nantandar Nagali and Aras Sharma and um, people like uh, Asbe and uh, Dilip Asbe of UPI and all came together and said, we should use the same thought what was helped what helped us to design the uh, upi uh, which is you know can be used here so if you look at any business transaction there are two sides one side is the money movement from the buyer to the seller and the other side is the goods uh, offer and a contract uh, with respect to goods or service so what upi did was for the money side and what ondc said that let's try to i mean or the you know the experts said let's try to do the same philosophical principle on the on the sell side, uh, which is on the products and services. So um, the work uh, uh, sort of uh, under the guidance of this advisory council, working with the Minister of Commerce uh, Piyush Goel and his DPIT team, um, started uh, shaping this agenda and decided to set up an independent company as OpenNet for Digital Commerce, which is sort of given the responsibility of developing this network across the country. So to give the flexibility and agility of this, the ministry decided that it has to set up as an independent company and to drive uh, its motivation has been sent up as a Section 8, which is a not-profit company, so that their job is to act as a utility providing an infrastructure service to everybody with um, uh, you know, uh, smart people uh, could build, uh, build components on the top and, uh, you know, and uh, provide services to either the sellers or the buyers uh, in a very seamless fashion. And the protocol sort of stitching them all together uh, so that the user experience is in no way compromised. So that's what uh, the thought was. The company was uh, formed in 2021, December 31st. And during the first, and then we started uh, getting the people on board and uh, as you would have realized it's a network there is no central infrastructure what the ondc has to do ondc in that is an orchestrator putting the common uh, things for uh, everybody to work together in terms of basic uh, the, the protocol the registry of the people participating um, uh, and the policies uh, for uh, the policies which mean the, the the house rules of how the network should operate and um, so which means that it has to demo you know and it's a it is a new idea nobody had ever done before so it has to work in an organic fashion so um, 10th of april 2022 is when um, there are some early adopters of sellers and buyers uh, established a seller few seller applications and one buyer application and one logistics provider came together to sort of um, uh, 
demonstrate transaction between them and then um, uh, and each of the sellers uh, encourage their uh, you know friends relatives and consumers to transact here because there's no point in telling the whole world that this is you know sellers and buyers are there because a normal buyer who uh, will expect uh, you know diverse choices that today he's familiar with whereas here uh, in a city let's say if you have one seller doing some grocery and it is relevant only to a small segment of people so uh, what we also said that let's try to do, touch on the very difficult part which is a hyper local part which is like we started with gro grocery and food and added soon after the mobility because if you look at they were all hyper local uh, in fact when it comes to food it is even have a desperate timing issue and uh, you know uh, the, the people all of us we said that let's try to demonstrate the possibility here uh, and by like I said by added by something five cities a uh, few merchants and one buying application one logistic provider coming together to demonstrate and over the next six months we sort of expanded the presence of sellers across the cities to 80 cities and uh, in some of the cities we said let's start to have a concentration of sellers so that you know when there is a no, no, sort of proliferation of sellers so that we can tell the public at large to come and check out their and their experience so uh, as, uh, October of last year we said in in Bangalore we are going to make it open it to a, a number of um, pin codes where any buyer could come and buy and uh, sort out whatever is the teething issues with respect to technology, processes, packaging, handshake between the entities and so on and so forth. And in January, we started, um, you know, uh, you know, that broad based uh, uh, information enough with respect to our beta test telling uh, our, uh, uh, you know, um, buyers in the Bangalore city come check it out so if you look at uh, you know if you look at what was there is that um, uh, we had uh, uh, in January we had something like 50 transactions a day 40 to 50 transactions a day in January on grocery and food and uh, by with the addition of mobility and so on and so forth we have uh, uh, in the last month, it was about 160,000 transactions. Now it's about 180,000 transactions a day. With uh, retail now uh, from, I mean, last when I made this catalog, I mean, the deck it was 53. Now it's about 65, 70,000 in the last one week of increase. And mobility is doing, um, you know, 110,000. And uh, new and a number of uh, uh, the uh, network participants are enabling these people to do. And they together brought a lot of merchants. We have something at 800 merchants uh, in the beginning of the year is now uh, 200,000 two weeks ago. Now it's about 20,000 two weeks ago with about 1.2 crores of SKUs, which is also fast growing. So the kind of network participants who are there, the buying side, selling side, logistic side, you would see uh, there are about 57,000 uh, uh, totally with about 12,000 other entities. Uh, under different stages of, uh, you know, of, uh, uh, their process of uh, being on board of the network as either as a buyer platform, seller platform, or an inventory seller platform, or purely coming as a seller through some uh, integrators and so on and so forth. So you would see, uh, you know, very broad array uh, of people from all the major uh, uh, logistics players like uh, ship rocket and delivery, buying applications like Payfake, Phone pay and uh, Paytm. Phone pay has, in fact, uh, launched an exclusive uh, uh, app for called PIN code, uh, which is essentially enabling uh, for commercial transaction. And somebody like Ola, who has been, uh, you know, who helps uh, people to pay, uh, hail cabs, have now realized, hey, I can do a lot more to my consumer. In fact, they started with by offering them. Uh, or NDC food, if you go to their, uh, you know, the application, you would see if you want to buy food, your facility and, and I'm, I understand that beyond food, they'll be adding many more other components so that for the existing digital consumers, they can have uh, more and more uh, offers being given at uh, practically uh, very limited marginal cost. And we are seeing this kind of idea being uh, embraced by people like telcos, fintechs, banks and, uh, you know, logistics company and so on and so forth and if i just give you an example prime i'm sort of ship rocket was a, 
primarily a logistics aggregator, a logistics player. They joined ONDC as an ONDC uh, ship, you know, a player providing logistics service in the network. Then they said, hey, uh, I have integration with quite a lot of sellers for whom I am helping them to uh, transport their product. Uh, and now I can help them to make their catalogs visible by being a seller application with a marginal integration. So now uh, they have started adding, uh, uh, you know, significant amount of sellers, especially need to see uh, merchants, etc., to be directly have, um, to be available on the ONDC network through their platform. So that way, it helped them to expand their area of operation from being a logistic provider to being a network, uh, like a next layer of service as an e-commerce player to help the sellers to sell their products, not just transport their product. And we also see enterprises like Google, I'm sure you would have seen the announcement. Google has uh, said that they've come out with the uh, ONDC on the box. They are working, and they're also making different interesting engineering, sophisticated engineering solutions like AI and uh, et cetera, uh, for different uh, smart enterprises to adopt for their requirement in the open ONDC network. And to demonstrate this power, they have even, you would have seen the announcement of building for Bara, the competition that they've launched uh, for a hackathon to uh, help people to build uh, on top of uh, the, the engineering infrastructure they provide to provide smart components in the on this ecosystem, either as a seller app or a buyer app and so on and so forth. Like I said, the, we are expecting the growth uh, like we are in 2023 probably this is our expectation, minimum expectation in terms of the, you know, the, uh, the the growth that we are coming. So, like I said, while we started with consumer food, I mean, like, you know, the, the grocery, food and uh, mobility, we have now added quite a broad array of products. And the last two months, you would see different, uh, you know, like fashion sort of picking up, uh, home and kitchen picking up, agriculture, B2C picking up, uh, and uh, quite health and wellness. Even financial products is, uh, we just announced the protocol and probably expect financial products being available. So if I just give you a big expectation with respect to what is this eventually could be in the next five to seven years, because our transformatory project at this population scale uh, would have a very, very, uh, um, what do you call, uh, broad arena in which it operates. So essentially, if I just make one statement, every product or service which is catalogable now will be made available in the ONDC network uh, through ONDC protocol with diverse kind of buying application, helping their buyers to buy what is relevant for them. And the buyer application in that way focuses on protecting the buyer's interest and not to push any product that the sellers are giving them with some extra incentive. So there, so now the conflict of interest also gets removed and the buyers uh, the buying application will become truly buyer's agent and the selling application will become sellers, truly selling a uh, seller's agent. Just to give you some of the, uh, you know, way in which it has, uh, you know, helped different kinds of people because of the equality and opportunity for big and small, unlike the current operations where it is focused and concentrated towards a large one. Uh, we see the uh, impact being made in uh, different domain. I'll just give you some examples, you know, uh, so while it is in no way focused only on small enterprises, what we are trying to create an inclusive enterprise, big and small, everybody can participate. And the big guys anyway knew how to handle their life in the digital world, but the small guys could never. So just give you some example of the Kudumbashree, which is a SSG from Kerala, which has managed about 1200 plus orders in the last few months. They are figuring out how to, now they have made their products available, now they are collectively figuring out how to use this to, uh, you know, make their improve their customer access uh, similarly like you know some examples of you know uh, silk weavers uh, earlier they were only selling to some established brands who were the only means of their uh, access to market now they now can have uh, direct access to market which is also helping them to sort of enhance their uh, sales or even somebody like auto driver you know he says i have uh, my monthly earnings have increased three times and that's a reason you would have seen the Honorable Prime Minister also, uh, you know, referring to this. And uh, if you look at the the way different uh, subject matter experts or industry experts come, for example, Antler came and said it's going to create an 80 billion opportunity for startups. Uh, you heard the, you would have seen the McKinsey report, which is three to four times uh, uh, growth in the digital commerce in different segments. You know, there's also a public report available you can download. 
So actually, if you look at logistics, commerce, and financial services all come together using a stitch together in the uh, experience for the consumers and sellers. Uh, uh, you know, which is helping them even broader, com you know, complementary things like you know, cheaper credit, wider discovery, um, better risk management by having different unique insurance product coming in, and so on and so forth. So all towards the vision of building in India into a 10 trillion economy. So I would just stop by saying that this is an idea whose time has come and you're not going to stop. Nobody is going to stop it. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this masterclass and thank you for watching. Don't forget to tune into our next one.